Welcome to the refrigeration system components uh, lecture under the areas of chemical process utilities. As you recall that we were discussing about uh, the different concepts of refrigeration and uh, refrigeration as you know that uh, it is an integral part of uh, uh, chemical process utilities. So, in the previous uh, lecture we discussed about the concept of refrigeration. Uh, we discussed about the refrigeration systems and cycle. We had uh, a discussion about the refrigeration system components including compressors, we discussed about the compression ratio, compression efficiency and the various factors those who are affecting the compressor efficiency. Apart from this uh, we discussed about the compressor capacity control, number of ways through which you can control the chem compressor capacity. Then we had a brief discussion about uh, the condensers especially air cooled condenser, water cooled condenser and evaporative type of uh, um, condensers. And we discussed about their utilization and uh, what is the importance of the condenser in the refrigeration system. Now, in this particular uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, the cooling tower. We will discuss about uh, the different uh, evaporators like liquid coolers, air cooler or gas cooler throttling devices, the thermal expansion valve, constant pressure expansion valve, float valve, uh, we will discuss about the capillary tubes, uh, apart from this uh, different auxiliary devices, they are also the, uh, the integral part of uh, refrigeration system, this including the accumulators, receivers, oil separator, stainers, solenoid valves, dryers, check valve, defrosters or defrost controllers. And then we will discuss about uh, the vapor compression refrigeration system. So, let us talk about uh, the cooling tower. Although in a separate lecture we had deliberated uh, or you can say the exhaustive discussion about the cooling towers, but again uh, in the refrigeration system they are also the integral part. So, this is uh, um, also working on a principle of cooling by evaporating water into a moving air system. Now, this uh, evaporative cooling it takes place uh, in the cooling tower, it depends on the wet bulb temperature of the dry air entering, air volume and the air water interface. And if you go through the, the cooling tower concept, you will understand that what is uh, the wet bulb temperature and uh, what is the concept of uh, the air water interface. Now, these are uh, the essentially large evaporating coolers where the, the chilled water is circulated to a remote shell and tube refrigerant condenser. Uh, the cooling water is circulating through the tubes uh, while refrigerant vapor condenses and gathers in the lower region of the heat exchanger. Now, this uh, particular um, uh, area subcooled, uh, subcools the refrigerant below the temperature of the condensation by bringing the coldest cooling tower water into this area of the condenser. Now, the warm water is sprayed over the packing in the tower and cooled with the help of air flow across this particular packing. Here you see, here the air is uh, circulating through this one and this is the packing, the mesh size uh, you can see and these are the droplets and uh, here the water is circulated and this is the exhaust air outlet. Now, let us talk about uh, the evaporators. Now, evaporator uh, these can be considered the point of heat capture in a refrigeration system and they provide uh, the cooling effect required for any particular application. Now, based on applications in heat exchanger, there are different type of evaporators. So, um, the evaporator when, when we are talking about the different type of evaporators, then again uh, uh, there may be a need of a classification or categories. So, the evaporators they are basically divided in two categories. One is the, the direct cooler evaporators, uh, the cool air that in turn cools the product and, and the indirect cooler evaporators, cool a liquid such as brine solution that in turn cools the product. 
Now, they, uh, there are various uh, evaporators, they are commonly used for the cooling, refrigerating, freezing and air conditioning applications like liquid uh, coolers, air cooler and gas coolers, etc. So, let us talk about uh, the liquid coolers. Now, shell and tube uh, type of heat exchangers, they are the most common form of evaporation units used for water cooling and chilling applications. Now, these are utilized to cool liquids which can be used as the secondary refrigerant or to cool the final product directly. So, in practice, these type of heat exchangers, they are known as liquid cooler or chillers. Now, there are some applications in food and refrigeration industries like chilling drinkable water, chilling milk after pasteurization. Uh, it can be used uh, for as a for uh, refrigeration system in the process cooling operation then water for the air conditioning coils now here you see that uh, this is uh, the typical uh, photograph uh, or figure of uh, shell and tube type of uh, evaporators now this is the shell and this is duly supported by baffles and uh, support plates and uh, here you see that uh, this is the tube side fluid and head and these baffles are supported with the tie rods and this is the tube. So, the shell side tube and you, you can see the circulating uh, path of the fluid in this arena. Now, the chilled water system, uh, this can use either a flooded evaporator that is the refrigerant flood uh, flooded with the, the shell side uh, of the heat exchanger or the direct expansion evaporator. Now, water is carried in the shell and refrigerant is boiled inside the tube, which are typically shell and tube type of uh, heat exchanger. Now, copper tube tubes are usually mounted with uh, a carbon steel shell. This is the mostly used for the chilling water evaporating applications. Now, if uh, the refrigerant vaporizes outside the surface of uh, the tube, then uh, uh, the evaporator is said to be called a flooded type of uh, cooler. Now, in flooded cooler, the water or brine is circulated throughout the tubes and fins are provided to increase the heat transfer rate and decrease the evaporator size. Now, it is used uh, in multiple compressor type of system. Now, it is desirable when shell side vaporization of refrigerant is desirable. Now, if uh, they vaporized inside the tube, it is called the cooler. Now, in dry cooler, the refrigerant are flowing through the tubes and the water or brine is circulated through the shell side. Now, let us talk about uh, the air and gas coolers. Now, these coolers are generally called the, the direct expansion coils and consist of a series of tubes through which refrigerant flows. The tubes which are uh, fined to increase the heat transfer rate from the medium to be cooled that is sometimes referred as air to the boiling point and they are normally arranged into a number of parallel circuits fed from a single throttling valve. The hot refrigerant vapor is accumulated in the outlet suction gas header. Now, these direct expansion coils are sometimes used only in the positive displacement compressor type of a system owing a quite low pressure ratio. Now, these are classified as a flooded and dry type. In practical applications, flooded type evaporators are not preferable because they require large amount of refrigerants. A dry coil requires only a small amount of refrigerant and this reduces the cost of refrigerant charges. The dry expansion coil sometimes they contain mostly liquid in the inlet and only superheated vapor at the outlet and after absorbing heat from the medium to be cooled. When the surface temperature fall uh, below 0 degree Celsius, frosting occurs and the results in reducing air flow rate and the inner space. Now, several methods being used for defrosting like uh, hot gas defrosters and water defrost. Now, here you see that uh, these are the air coolers, uh, these are the room type of air coolers and this is the large scale industrial type of air coolers. 
Now, let us talk about the throttling device. Now, uh, the throttling device, they are the integral part of any refrigeration system and they are called either expansion or throttling valves. Basically, they are used to reduce the refrigerant condensing pressure to evaporating pressure by throttling operation and regulate the liquid refrigerant flow to the evaporator to match the equipment and load characteristics. Now, these devices are designed to uh, proportion the rate at which the refrigerant enters the cooling coil to the rate of evaporation of the liquid refrigerant in the coil. There are various kinds of uh, throttling devices. Uh, the most common throttling devices are the thermostatic expansion valves, the constant pressure valves, the throat valves and the capillary tubes. Now, let us talk about the thermostatic expansion valves. The, now, they are basically automatic type. So, automatically control the liquid refrigerant flow to the evaporator at a rate that matches the system capacity to the actual load. Now, they operate by sensing the temperature of superheated refrigerant vapor leaving the evaporator. Now, when the thermostatic expansion valve is operating properly, the temperature at the outlet side of the valve is much lower than that at the inlet side. Now, if temperature difference does not exist when the system is in operation, the valve seat is probably dirty and clogged with foreign matter. Now, here you see that uh, this is uh, the electronic uh, expansion valve. Now, here this is the temperature sensor and uh, this is the external equalizer. This is the inlet line from the condenser and this particular line goes to the coil. Now, uh, let us talk about the constant pressure expansion valve. The constant uh, uh, pressure valve is a forerunner of uh, the thermostatic expansion valve and sometimes uh, it is called uh, an automatic expansion valve due to the fact that uh, it opens and closes automatically without the aid of any kind of external mechanical device. Now, these are the pressure regulating devices used to maintain the constant pressure at outlet. They sense the uh, and keep the evaporated pressure at a constant value by controlling the liquid refrigerant flow into the evaporator and that is based on the suction pressure. Let us talk about the float valves. Now, these are divided into high side float valves and low side float valves. They are used to employ the control over the refrigerant flow uh, to a flooded type of uh, liquid cooler. Now, it is used in a refrigeration system with a single evaporator compressor and condenser. In some cases, a float valve operates an electrical switch controlling to a solenoid valve which periodically admits the liquid refrigerant to the evaporator and allowing the liquid level to fluctuate within the preset limit. Capillary tubes. The capillary tube is the simplest type of refrigerant flow control device used in place of an expansion valve. Now, the capillary tubes are small diameter tubes through which the refrigerant flows into the evaporator. Now, these devices are used in small hermetic refrigeration system, reduce the pressure to evaporating pressure in copper tube of a small diameter and maintaining a constant evaporating pressure independently of the refrigeration load change. Now, here you see this is the practical vapor compression refrigeration system with all kind of control device and you see that how mammoth it is the task. Here you are having this evaporator with the equipped with the temperature control device and uh, usually when we are talking about the evaporator, it should be a series of thermo valves with the uh, hot gas bypass regulator. And here you are maintaining the evaporator pressure and the flow line is just like this and uh, suction accumulator, suction line filter, dryer, etc. And here you see the major component that is called the condenser which is here uh, um, and uh, this is uh, 
uh, attached with the solenoid valve and all kind of uh, devices like fan cycling, um, uh, cool control, temperature control, head pressure control, all these things they are connected with the condenser. Apart from this uh, or other allied uh, uh, accessories like muffler, oil separator, liquid indicator, oil filter, all these things are attached to this uh, uh, vapor compression refrigeration system. So, you see that the purpose of this particular figure is to introduce that uh, how complex this particular system is and uh, we need to have a very precise control and we need to have a proper instrumentation while handling this uh, vapor compression refrigeration system. So, if you see in this uh, particular figure, uh, we have used uh, various kind of auxiliary devices. So, when we talk about the auxiliary devices, then there are various auxiliary devices like accumulators, then we are having the different type of uh, valves, con temperature controllers, etc. Now, let us talk about the accumulator. Now, the purpose of accumulator is to act as a, a reservoir to temporarily hold the excess of oil refrigerant mixture and to return it at a rate that the compressor can safely handle. Also accumulator include a heat exchanger coil to add in uh, the boiling of uh, the liquid refrigerant while subcooling the refrigerant in the liquid line. Therefore, it helps uh, the system to operate more efficiently. Now, the proper installation of a suction accumulator in the suction line just after the reversing valve and before the compressor, it helps to eliminate any kind of uh, uh, possible damage. In large uh, holdover, in the plate refrigerator and freezer system, the refrigerant can accumulate in plates and uh, suction line when the compressor is not running. So, when installed in the suction line of the compressor, a suction accumulator protects the compressor from this particular uh, liquid slugging by gradually feeding liquid refrigerant into the compressor. Now, here you see this is uh, the typical photograph of an accumulator. This accumulator should be selected according to the tonnage of uh, refrigeration system, according to the uh, evaporator temperature and according to the holding capacity. Now, next is the receiver. The refrigeration units have enough space within the condenser to accommodate the entire refrigerant charge of the system. Now, if the condenser does not have sufficient space, a receiver tank should be provided. The amount of refrigerant required for proper operation of the system this determines whether or not a receiver is required or uh, required or not required. Now, this uh, the receiver they provide uh, a place to store the excess refrigerant in the system when the expansion valve restricts the flow to the evaporator. Now, it usually maintain uh, the condenser drain to of liquid. So, preventing liquid level from building up in condenser and reducing amount of effective condenser surface area. Now, here you see that uh, the, the typical photograph of uh, receiver, this is the horizontal type of uh, receiver and this is uh, the vertical type of receiver. Both are having their own speciality and uh, due to the design consideration, one can use the appropriate type of uh, uh, receiver based on the requirement. Then there are uh, certain oil separators and they are uh, uh, used to remove the oil in due course of time because during the, the circulation, refrigerant may accumulate some, some sort of traces of oil and uh, these oil needs to be uh, separated from the main refrigerant to make the system more and more efficient. So, this these oil separators, they provide the oil separation and limit oil carry over to approximately 0 0.0003 to 0 0.001 percent of total amount of refrigerant. And depending on system characteristics like uh, operating condition, uh, refrigerant start or stop or load or unload frequency, etcetera. 
Now, these separators are normally used for large variety of refrigerants like ammonia, R134A or propane. So, all the separators they require the mounting of an external float assembly to control return from uh, the separator to the compressor, strainers. Over the period of time of uh, circulation of uh, uh, the refrigerant in the piping system, these refrigerant may, may have certain type of uh, dirt, dust, debris. This may be because of uh, uh, the metal chip removal because of the corrosion, maybe because of the some problems in the internal lining, etc. So, the basic purpose of a stainer is to remove the foreign matter like dirt, metal chips from the refrigerant line. The unwanted matter, they can clog the small orifice of the flow control device, uh, even the throttling device and check valves and enter into the, the compressor. Now, the various types of stainers available as on date such as straight through seal type, cleanable angle type and cleanable Y type. Next is the dryer. In refrigeration system, moisture is the single most detrimental factor in the refrigeration system. So, the refrigeration systems, uh, they are equipped with dryers and there are various factors uh, those who are influencing in the selection of correct size of dryer. One is that the type and amount of uh, refrigerant, basically we are dealing with the quantity and the quality. Then refrigeration system with respect to the tonnage, then the line size and allowable pressure drop. Next is the check valve. Now, it is used for two basic essential goals. One is to cause the refrigerant to flow through the flow control device and second is to allow the refrigerant to bypass the flow control device. Now, these valves are installed in a loop that bypasses the flow control device and only upon when pressure is exerted in the right direction. So, therefore, they should be installed with the, the arrow pointing in the proper direction of the refrigerant flow at the point of installation. Now, these valves are usually spring loaded and opens when the pressure difference on the seat reaches around about 100 to say 135 kilo Pascal. Solenoid valves. Now, it is used in all type of refrigeration applications and these are electrically operated line stop walls and uh, perform in same manner as hand shut off walls. Now, these are convenient for remote application due to the fact that these are electrically operated and can control easily. Defrost controllers and defrosting is again the essential phenomena in the refrigeration system. So, a defrost controller with the timer, this operates various control valves and fan relays to quickly and efficiently remove the frost and ice accumulation from evaporator surfaces. Now, there are four easy to set defrost type such as pump out, hot gas, equalize and fan delay. Now, because of its time adjustable four step defrost operation, this controller is suitable for almost every defrost application including top and bottom feed unit, cooler, blast freezer, evaporator, ice makers, etc. Now, here you see the defrost uh, controller with a timer. Now, let us talk about the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Now, there are four major steps uh, or you can say the thermal processes uh, they usually uh, carried out in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. One is evaporation, compression, condensation and expansion. It is a usual thermodynamic cycle. For better understanding, the refrigeration cycle is usually shown by the temperature entropy or pressure enthalpy diagram. Now, here you see this is uh, the comprehensive uh, figure. Here you are, this is the usual uh, uh, refrigeration cycle, you are having uh, a low temperature source and a high temperature sink. 
so QL amount of heat is being extracted through the evaporator and it passes through, uh, th through the compressor and it goes to the con condenser where the QH amount of heat being discharged either to the atmosphere or sink and uh, goes to the expansion valve. You need to carry out uh, a work, W work over the compression. So, this is the basic vapor compression refrigeration system. Now, when you need to carry out or because sometimes uh, for the thermodynamic calculation, you need to have the T, this T, TS diagram that is a temperature and uh, entropy diagram apart from this, this pH diagram. So, you can represent this with the help of this like from evaporator from stage 1 to stage 2 when this is the centropic operation and then it goes to the condenser line that is again the, the um, uh, this particular operation. So, this is represented with this uh, TS diagram and uh, uh, this pH pressure enthalpy uh, diagram. Now, uh, in an elaborative manner the evaporation process uh, it can occur at any temperature and pressure in combination. Um, it is a gaseous uh, uh, molecule escape from the surface of liquid by the absorption of a considerable quantity of heat with any change in the temperature. It is a usual phenomenon of evaporation. The evaporated gases they exert pressure and that is so called the vapor pressure on increase in the temperature of the liquid, this also increase the vapor pressure. So, the low pressure cooled refrigerant vapor is brought into the contact with the medium to be cooled and that is called the heat sink and absorbs the heat and results in uh, boil and producing low pressure saturated vapor. Now, let us talk about the compression. The vapor of uh, the refrigerant this obtained from uh, the evaporator is of raised pressure by using the shaft work of the compressor. Now, there is a, uh, addition of heat and due to which there is a raise in the pressure because uh, the compressor, uh, uh, the work is employed on the, the compressor. Now, this increased gas pressure rises in the boiling and condensing temperature of the refrigerant. The gaseous refrigerant is then compressed and its boiling temperature is higher than that of the sinks. Next step is the condensation. Now, this process includes changing vapor into liquid by extracting heat. So, whatever heat being absorbed apart from the, uh, the work being carried out through the, the compressor, this uh, you need to exchange or you need to extract the heat. Now, the condensing temperature of refrigerant is higher than the sink. Therefore, heat transfer condenses the high pressure refrigerant into the saturated liquid. So, sometimes it is desired that the condenser cool the refrigerant below the condensation temperature and that is called the subcooling. Now, subcooling is observed in condenser to reduce the flashing when the refrigerant pressure is reduced in the throttling device. The next step is expansion. The condensed liquid is returned to the beginning and some throttling device such as valve, orifice plate or capillary tube for the expansion is used to reduce the pressure of liquid and the boiling temperature of the refrigerant should be below the heat source. Now, this energy loss through pressure reduction is offset with the addition of energy input in the pressurization stage. Now, here you see that uh, the operation of the system is described. Now, from stage 1 to 2, this is the reversible adiabatic compression from the evaporator, the low pressure saturated refrigerant vapor comes out to the compressor and uh, it is compressed into the condenser by volume reduction and increased pressure and temperature. Now, irreversible heat rejection from this stage to this. Um, from the compressor, uh, the high pressure refrigerant vapor enters the condenser and is liquefied by employing water or air. That is the usual phenomena which we described. Now, from this stage to this stage, that is uh, the irreversible expansion at the constant enthalpy. So, from the condenser, high pressure saturated refrigerant liquid passes through the expansion valve and its pressure and temperature, it's, uh, they are reduced. 
and during the evaporation or from stage 1 to no, stage 4 to 1 the reversible heat addition at constant pressure. Now, from the expansion valve low pressure refrigerant liquid arrives in the evaporator. It boils here and in the process absorbs heat from the surrounding medium and thereby providing a cooling effect. Now, this particular aspect is clearly represented in this TS and PH diagram which we have described earlier. So, in this uh, particular lecture, we discussed uh, uh, about the various component at in the refrigeration system, various auxiliary units like oil separators, strainers, etcetera, their use and their uh, importance. Apart from this, uh, we discussed the basic concept of vapor compression refrigeration cycles. For your convenience, we have enlisted couple of references and if you wish, you can go through all these references. Thank you very much.